JJ, the obvious 38 in the room, you personally, what does this award mean to you? I mean, it means everything. Me just growing up here and um, just hearing about the award at so young of an age, I mean, it just means the world to be able to honor him, his legacy, and to be able to um, keep it going. JJ, I know in the video they put out, if you tell telling your parents, you said you wear 38 at home mm -hmm. and 89 on the road. I guess kind of what went into your process of how you wanted to do that? Yeah, um, so my dad played college football, and he was 89. And um, always in high school, I always wanted to be uh, 89 just to represent him and the things he did for me. So um, I just felt like just to honor him as well on the road. And um, obviously, I wanted want to wear the 38. So give the community what they want and uh, what I want and just wear it at home. Talked about growing up, learning about this award and all that, you know, as you followed Ole Miss football through the years, was there a particular Chucky Wollens Courage Award winner, you know, growing up that just kind of you looked at and was kind of inspired by, you know, what that award, you know, is supposed to mean? Yeah. Um, Haynes, number, he was number 10 here. He played DN here. I remember just watching him and the way he played, and he just played relentless and um, just never gave up that mentality. And uh, that's what I want to bring here, just never give up. And no matter the circumstance, just keep going and push it forward. You know, with fall camp all wrapped up and whatnot, what, what was working well for you uh, during that time? And I guess what were some things that you improved on? Um, I would say a big thing that I was trying to really just focus on was making plays outside the court. Um, I know um, typical D linemen don't like to run outside the court and make plays 30, 40 yards downfield. So just trying to build my endurance and um, just be able to play everywhere, um, like in, inside, interior, or wherever they need me to play. But um, I feel like I've done a great job. And the team, my team also helped me with that and Coach Joyner. Talk about what uh, Walter Nolan brings to the – table and if he takes pressure off of you. Oh, yeah, a lot. I mean, we all know what type player Walt is. He's fast, physical, and quick. And um, I feel like it'll help um, me out with the double teams and just getting the attention inside and for us to be able to play um, play off each other, bounce off information off each other, and be able to disrupt the quarterback. JJ, I know there's a lot of depth across that defensive front. Just curious, uh, some of the younger guys we haven't heard about. I know that this past class that, that Ole Miss got was the number one uh, one of the best defensive line classes in the country. Who are some of the younger guys that have uh, kind of stepped up this this fall camp? Yeah, sir, definitely Will Eccles and Cam Franklin. Them two both um, caught my attention when they first got on campus. Um, just their work ethic and them just coming each and every day. I mean, they're young, so they're learning um, uh, with me, J.I., Jared Ivey, um, Walter Nolan, and um, they just really just taking a step to success. And I feel like Cam is doing a great job <laughs> Just being able to be where his feet are, you know, because you hear all the, oh, I'm, I was a five-star, this and that, and you got great guys in front of you. You easily can just wear off and do whatever, wander off and do whatever you want to. But I feel like you come, come in, locked in, every, every day ready to go. Lane talks about the NFL model and kind of the ramp up of training camp. Just has it been any different this year than years in the past and kind of how prepared do you feel like this team is getting ready for game week? Yeah, um, I feel like it's more urgency um, just because – of the talent we have on our, uh, on our team. and um, But he always talk about the pro mindset and uh, how we should, you know, just take everything and do everything like we would if we were already at the next level. And um, him just doing that, like, it really helps us. And we got a lot of coaches on staff that was NFL head coach and um, just uh, was on NFL staff. So I feel like him doing that and building that type of uh, staff is just helping us even more for the next level. And you mentioned kind of that urgency that you guys have because you know the opportunity that you all have. Um, kind of, does that put, do you feel any extra pressure because of that or is that just something that you all are embracing? Nah, it's, it's no extra pressure. I mean, we just, the same guys, you know, we, we put our pants on like everyone else do. And um, we just know that at the end of the day, this team got what we got and um, we all we need. And at the end of the day, that's, I mean, like I said, yeah, that's all we need. So I wouldn't say it's just, um, extra pressure on us, but we know the goal and we know um, what we want. DJ, what have you seen the progress of uh, Jamarius Brown? Mm -hmm. Jamarius Brown, I mean, he's physical. Um, we love the attack blocks. Um, he has definitely worked on his um, pass rush, uh, in contact phase pass rush, and um, I feel like he's doing a great job. 
So every year we change our offensive line a little bit. You had a chance to, to go up against most of those guys one on one, the pass pro. Mm -hmm. Talk talk about uh, some of the newer guys and what you've seen. Uh, definitely. Uh, I know I go up get, go up against um, Juice a lot, and uh, he's very physical. He got long arms, so it's really hard to like get into his chest um, be just because of long long arms he has. But um, he does a great job with like just communication and picking up on um, little tails we have on defense. And I feel like that goes a long way just because it helps definitely with the iPads we have on the, on the sideline. Now it helps you out major. So that little thing, and um, I also go against Nate from Washington as well, and. Um, he got a violent right hand, like <laughs> he bring it every time. But um, no, those two together with our um, O line that was here last year are very great for us, and um, I can see them doing big things here. JJ, will you have offensive opportunities again this year yourself? Yes, sir. A lot of them. A lot of them. <laughs> a lot. Any more Just to refresh the memory a little bit, when you were going through the recruiting process and, you know, before going to Auburn and all that, how many schools were you recruited to be an offensive guy or defensive guy? Or, or if you don't mind refreshing our memory of what that was like. Um, so you all the schools wanted me wanted to be me to be an offensive guy, but I know Alabama wanted me to be a defensive guy, Alabama and LSU. So I was just like, nah, I just threw them out because I ain't think no defense. But um, I was just offensive mindset. But, um, yeah, it was just really Alabama and LSU. You talked about throwing them out. How long did it take for you to come around to just embrace being a defensive guy when you were kind of going through that position change? Mm -hmm. I, I know my dad always, like, um, don't get stuck playing offense just because, like, you're, like, a freak, like, just 6'2 and just big and running over kids. So I had the mindset of just keep doing what I'm doing, be where my feet are, but just know that God going to make a change in your life and you either can choose to – let it affect you, or you can just, you know, just go a long way with it and go along with it and just keep striving to be great. So that's what I did. So I started at Auburn playing tight end my freshman year. And then in the spring, my sophomore year, I transferred to D-line. And then um, that season, it was a tough season, just the um, transformation, not playing as much. But then I came here and got with Coach Joyner, and everything's been great ever since. Appreciate y'all.